Welcome back, Amiibros, to Bioshock. In the last episode, we discovered a portion of Lot 192 that, unfortunately, made our entire plasmid structure go haywire, effectively putting it on a randomizer. In this episode, we'll be venturing through the sub-level of Olympus Heights, Apollo Square, and making our way to Suchong's office in Artemis Suites. So right here, we see a Circus of Values machine turned on its side, which, surprisingly, doesn't mean a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. I mean, you still have to hack it if you want reduced prices, or you can just say, fuck it, like me, and just pay full price for the things, because, you know, you're swimming in money at this point. Maybe the people in Apollo Square got so fed up of the machine laughing at them every time they didn't have money that they just decided to say, fuck it, I'm turning it over, and I'm scribbling on it. Let's see what Ryan thinks about that. I mean, the Circus of Values machine laughing at you, it's kind of like, you know, if you were spending a buck fifty on a candy bar at a vending machine, and then that candy bar got stuck, and then the vending machine decided to laugh at you while flipping you off, and you couldn't do anything about it. That'd be really irritating, and funny enough, it's that fear of the candy bar getting stuck after spending money on it. That is the, it's the reason why I don't spend money at vending machines anymore. True story. <laughs> but I digress. Uh, usually when you enter Apollo Square, there will be a little sister and a big daddy, uh, followed by a horde of splicers. Do yourself a favor and let the big daddy take care of the splicers, just to save yourself the headache. Plus, not only that, but there will be a chance that the splicers do some damage to the big daddy, because remember, after Hephaestus, the main big daddies we're going to be encountering are rosy big daddies, which kind of sucks, but whatever. So, there's that. So any damage done to the Rosie is electric gel that you get to save, or rocket propel grenades, or whatever you use to take care of Big Daddies at this point. Because remember, we still haven't collected that full portion of Lot 192, meaning our plasmids are on a randomizer. So, if you have something like, say, Enrage, or a Security Bullseye, or something that isn't really effective at taking down the Big Daddies, even in a support capacity, yeah, chances are you don't want to, you know, chance that. Because, yes, there is a Vita Chamber as soon as you enter Apollo Square, but there is also the chance that the Big Daddy and the Little Sister will already be in a different part of the level by then. Which, granted, Apollo Square isn't a big level. Much like Farmer's Market, this level is short. Um, it's only comprised of three sections, really. Uh, there's... Artemis Suites, where we're heading towards now, uh, Hanging Square, which we're about to see right now, and later on, the Little Sister Orphanage. But that's about it, you know? I mean, it's largely similar to Olympus Heights, with which, considering that Olympus Heights is meant to be the apartment complex for the best and brightest, and Olympus Heights is more or less meant to be the living quarters for the common folk of Rapture, that yeah, makes sense, even if it is a little lazy element. But, yeah. And as you see right there, we can actually collect the incendiary bolts that we fire at uh, splicers. It's not just the steel tip bolts, so... I am corrected. The game went out of its way to correct me after I had stated that in the previous episode, I believe. So, yeah. The only bolts you can't recover are trap bolts, which... Reasonable enough. But now we have Winter Blast, which is no electric bolt, but we can freeze machinery, allowing us to hack it. So if you're tired of using electric bolt and you want to use something different, uh, but you still want to have the benefits of hacking, Winter Blast is the way to go. Generally around this portion of the game, or like the last third of it, I tend is when I tend to use um, freezing weapons like Winter Blast, um, you know, the Icy Wrench, I forget the name of the tonic already. Um, I generally don't like to freeze splicers, at least early to mid-game I don't, or whenever uh, Winter Blast is introduced. Only because, remember, every time you freeze a splicer and shatter them, whatever they were carrying goes with them. So say, like, you freeze the splicer, and that splicer has a crap ton of Rapture Dollars. Yes, that's a price amount, a crap ton. Um, the moment they shatter, they take that crap ton with them. So if you were going to use those crap ton of Rapture Dollars to buy first aid kits at Circus of Values machines, well, now you can't. But when you get to this point in the game, uh, Olympus Heights, uh, Apollo Square and the like, uh, where the game just chucks money at you, 
freezing and shattering splicers isn't really a problem. At least in my case, you know, so the moment you arrive here and you want to use Winter Blast or um, or your Icy Wrench, just go nuts. Just go absolutely nuts. Pretend you're Iceman from the X-Men and just freeze away. So for right now, we need to pretend we're Electro or hell, even Static Shock, because right now we have electricity powers. Yeah. A good thing, too, because there are some security turrets around here. And we no longer have Electric Bolt, so we gotta get a little creative here. We only have Enrage. And considering we haven't been encountering groups of Splicers in Artemis Suite so far, yeah, it's about as effective as you think it is. Because that that's the thing that kind of gets in the way of me using Enrage. I won't say it's a particularly bad Plasmid, at least objectively I won't say it's bad, because any Plasmid can suit any person's playstyle that plays this game. It's just that, like Security Bullseye, it requires you to be very flexible in how you use it, and it's very situational, which again, it doesn't automatically equal bad. If you have an out to a situation with a particular power-up or weapon or what have you, then there is a place for it, it's just limited. I guess is the best word to describe it. Well, unfortunately, that splicer got a bad case of the burns and died right as she was next to that puddle of water. Real shame. But before we head into Su Chong's office, I want to explore around Artemis Suite just a little bit more. And thankfully, that splicer was actually dead this time and not faking it. Could have sworn he was, but eh. I don't remember every splicer in this game that is dead and isn't dead, because sometimes, again, they pull a fast one on you. And speaking of which, here's another splicer that we get to take care of, and we switch to a new plasmid that isn't really helpful in this situation. Yay! <laughs> and for some reason, I tried to use it. Good thing that that security turret, even though it's against me, still has my back. See? Even when they're not working for me, they're still working with me. Well, unfortunately, I gotta go put it down now. Alright, stop switching to Hypnotize McGaddy. Seriously, it's not that helpful. <laughs> Try as I might, I won't be able to hypnotize the security turrets. I gotta put you down, grenade launcher security turret. You will be missed. Even though you weren't carrying uh, any grenades with you. Which would have been helpful in that regard. You're a disgrace to grenade launching security turrets everywhere. I did rapture a favor by killing you. But apparently, that citizen of Rapture would disagree. Unfortunately for her, I have the power of fire and bees on my side. The only thing worse than regular bees is flaming bees. That are um, electric, uh, electrically charged bees. Had to pause right there, just to not garble my words. Um, but I think that would be really cool, though, like, for an upgrade uh, to Insect Swarm. Instead of uh, utilizing more bees, instead you get to use elemental bees. Like, say you get to, uh, sw um, you get to unleash a swarm of fire hornets on a splicer, or hell, uh, one would be called, like, zappy hornets or something like that. Double the sting, double the fun, I guess. I don't know. It certainly sounds a lot better than just, you know, saying like, ooh, you get to unleash more bees on splicers. Ooh. You know? Or, hell, better than Electro Bolt 3, where, oh, guess what? Enemies, uh, enemies and turrets stay stunned for longer, and you have more electricity shooting from your fingertips, I guess. I don't know. Like I said, missed opportunity that they didn't add more to it than that. Or you were able to... Uh, add different types of elemental powers to your already existing plasmids. I mean, granted, that would probably explode your hand or something, but still, I think that'd be really damn cool, honestly. Maybe in Bioshock 4, whenever the hell we get to see that at a presentation. Again, I think that there's still so much untapped potential, at least in terms of uh, gameplay. Um that you could do with uh, Bioshock. I mean, narratively, it all depends on 
what your idea is as well as you know what philosophy you want to explore in a story but again I think like I said in terms of gameplay mixing and matching your different powers I think that sounds like a really damn cool idea but speaking of mixing and matching right here at this gene bank you can see that while our plasmids are locked off we can still mix and match our tonics which it's sort of inconsistent because you think that your plasmid structure is the same as your tonic structure because in the Bioshock novel, um, Sports Boost, which is a tonic in this game, they reference that as a plasmid, which that's probably a goof on the writer's part, but I mean, I can't really say I blame the writer because plasmids and tonics are found in the same type of container so they might as well be the same because they do alter you genetically i don't know it's weirdly inconsistent but i guess they didn't want to make it too tough for you that they that they lock off all your upgrades and have you start off from square one to create like an uneven difficulty spike or something i don't know but i mean i should be glad that, that the upgrades aren't locked off to me or even you when you start playing. But we now enter the office of one Yi Su Chong. And he's seen a lot better days. Over here we see this audio diary. Why don't we give it a listen? Protection Bond. Clinical trial protector system. Plasmid lot 255. Dr. Su Chong. Client Orion Industries. Very frustrating day. I can't seem to get the damn big daddies to imprint on the little brats. The protection bond is just not for me. Get, get, get away. Um, uh, maybe if I modify the genetic sequence. To, uh, sure, sure. Uh, the sequence to allow for. Get away, you filthy little shit! If you ever wonder why Su Chong's photo has a drop of blood on it, that's why. But with that being said, bottoms up. Now you are having freedom. Su Chong's drugs should have no hold on you. Take the bathysphere to Point Prometheus. It is time for this matter to be settled. Whoa there, Tenabomb! Hold on just one second, there's still one little sister in this level that we have to rescue! Ho <laughs> ho! <laughs> but yeah, we are now free from Fontaine's control completely. Meaning, our plasmid structure is back the way it is. We can pick and choose our plasmids however we please. So, no security turret is beyond us hacking. However, we're going to celebrate this newfound freedom by destroying that security bot right there because fuck it, I'm a free man. I don't care. I like security turrets way more anyways. And there's me trying to make sure that my research for the turret is complete. That's one thing I would have appreciated in this game is that aside from... Because you do get achievements for when you complete the research on a particular subject, but because I've already done that... Um, the achievement won't pop up, so I do wish, like, in-game there was something that alerted you, uh, as to how many research levels you have on a particular subject. Would have been helpful, at least I think it, at least I think it would have been. But yeah, we still have one more little sister to rescue, so we're not exactly out of the woods yet. But as you no doubt noticed, by the view, color has returned to rapture. Hallelujah! Um... <laughs> That is one thing um, that I didn't really talk about till just now. Um, when you first drink the small dosage of Lot 192, for some reason, the uh, your whole view of Rapture just gets desaturated. There's no color to it anymore. It makes the whole city look bleaker than it already is, which, considering the levels that you're going to be exploring I think work effectively 
um, especially in Apollo Square, um, when you have like the whole, like the whole uh, soundtrack or music track for it. I guess it's the operative word, but the whole music track for the level is just like these distant cries and stuff like that. It's very eerie and stuff. I mean, when when you're done watching this episode, go take a listen of it. Uh, I recommend it. But it definitely helps in making the, the level feel very unsettling. And I think it's like the most blatant the game has gotten as far as, you know, how unsettling and creepy the whole place is, you know? I mean, because Apollo Square is essentially the boonies of Rapture. Let's let's not mince words here. <laughs> it is, which makes you wonder why so much money is located within Apollo Square to begin with. But who knows? Maybe the people of Apollo Square decide to eat the rich. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. Everybody's spliced up to the point that that I could see them using Incinerate to cook a rich smuck and gave them the wrong look. I don't know. It's certainly possible. What can I really do for these little ones? I am tainted by sin. But you, perhaps you unlock a future for them that I cannot even imagine. A little one heads your way with a gift. Please be careful. Eh, don't you worry, Tannenbaum. Now that I've drink, uh, that I've drank, drank, <laughs> um, now that I've drank that large dosage of Lot 192, I can now finally buy things at the Gatherer's Gardens. Hallelujah! Well, first I need to find one. This sounds like a job for the handy dandy map, which up until this point I haven't had to use. Um, you open up the map by just pressing the select button and there you go. It shows you where everything is as well as your current location, so that's nice. But over here we see an audio diary surrounded by a bunch of other stuff. Why don't we give that audio diary a listen? bit of context for Fontaine's uprising as Atlas. But on a brighter note, we just picked up an engineering tonic, one of my personal favorites, prolific inventor. Pretty much, whatever we create at a U-Invent machine, we get double of that item. Oh, that is so damn good, and it's going to be so helpful for the rest of the game. But we'll have to wait till next time to see just how helpful it really is, as next time on Bioshock, we'll be exploring the last section of Apollo Square before we head over to Fontaine. See you guys then. I was so angry when I came down here, but my, my God, I had no idea. There were armed men all over the place. I saw a woman climb over the fence trying to escape. One of Ryan's guards pointed at her and she lit on fire. Just like that. What's happening here? 